The Nathan, Nat and Sean podcast. Alicia Moore's in the country <laughs> um, and travelling around. Moore. Yes, that's pink, everybody. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. She loves Australia. And Australia yeah. loves her. And she's best friends with Rove. She, she does. Mm. She is, yeah, genuinely. Mm. Yeah, I know. I, know. Yeah. I didn't. Yeah. I knew they were friends. I didn't yeah. realise they were that close. Yeah, they are, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Why, where's your, why don't you have this mega star friend? Yeah, it's no, got us. Because I'm not in that category. <laughs> it's got us, Nathan. Or anywhere near it. Really? Mm. Oh, you got, oh, yeah, that's oh, right. got you two. That's the answer. Oh, Nathan Morris, why, why, that, that again? Why don't you have any mega star friends? Yeah, I do. Who? Nathan Morris, Natalie Locke. Oh, oh sure. You're so lucky, Sean. Don't, don't go on I'm about it. Yeah, God. Yeah. Don't. We just, mm-hmm. you know. And, tell your friends. Tell your friends. Kate Walsh, obviously. Oh, Kate Walsh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Kate Walsh. Anyway. Uh, so, uh, Pink was going to a Sydney hotspot. Have you heard mm. of the Manly Skiff Club? Skiff Club, no. Yes. So it's one of those sailing clubs on the river, on the, on the harbour, yeah. where they have a fancy restaurant in there. Yeah, and they sell like I think Skiff and chips. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I don't know what. What's Skiff? A skiff's a boat. Oh. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah a it's, boat. A boat. it's a boat. It's a boat. So that's what they're saying. So, anyway, so she, wanted to go get some flat she wanted to get mm. some skiff and chips mm. from this place. And she had a um, a party of around eight or nine people with mm-hmm. her as well. Mm-hmm. So she's gone to the door. She's uh, she's uh, uh, reserved. So she's already made a booking And paid there. a deposit. And Matt paid a deposit. Mm. So she rocked up there and um, they've had to deny she'd never ID. <laughs> and like... <laughs> Alicia Moore. Alicia Moore. So her face wasn't enough. Yeah, so uh, the managers, the floor manager, everyone in there knew that Pink was at the door, but they still turned her away. This guy says, next thing I saw Pink and a group walking away, they just turfed her out. Oh. She didn't make a big fuss or anything. No, she's she, like, they, oh, that's they said there was no David deba- behaviour and she just left. Because it is those sailing clubs, they have that regulation, the licensing regulation, where you have to show ID and become like a temporary member and things like, like a guest member. Why didn't they have this discussion with her when they were taking her booking oh, thought, and then yes. taking her deposit? Yeah, I Who would have knows? So. But you know what? Yeah. I just feel for the person that was at the door Who knowing that it's pink. Because you know what? Even if you don't know anything, she's got pink hair. She's currently sporting pink hair. She's pink. And even she's if pink. you don't know anything, somebody told you. Because that's, she's yeah, pink. people so, told you, hey, so that's at pink. the door, that's pink. And, and you like, have to say no to letting pink in. Nate, was there any, um, I mean, it depends on how you how you read it, but there was any revelling in the fact that they no, knocked it back? No, it just it seemed like they, they were sticking to the rules. I'm sorry, but it would be, we don't want to get... Been, it would have been horrendous for that person because, you know, really an ID is, you know, there's there's legal requirements behind it, but it's mm. also a great way to know who's in your club at the time in case there's an incident as well. Mm. A lot of nightclubs, that's, yeah, that's some of the reasons they that. do it. That's why um, I go to nightclubs. But the thing is about it, you know, you know that's pink. She, we all know, I know it's pink. pink. Seagulls I've got know it's in. pink. I've got to bend the rules yeah, for pink. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I do. That would have been a horrendous thing. To, get say to be no. the one on the door. You wouldn't bend the rules for pink. No, I would. I would. Oh, yeah. Yeah, me no, too, I would. I'd bend the rules for pink. Yeah. But then again, should we be bending rules for celebrities, really? Just because they're celebrities. Because, you know, Travis Barker was here the other day and he needed to go to the toilet and was outside of hairdressers and they were like, oh, my God, come inside, use our toilet. But it's like, well, can, are you going to do that to anyone that needs a toilet? No, no, but no. They, they, he gave them tickets to the mm-hmm. concert. No, no, but that wasn't the trans. It wasn't transactional. Mm. Yeah, was, no, that, no, no. It, yeah, they, it they, and then yeah. that was afterwards. Mm. So, anyway. I don't think there needs to be levels, but yeah. certainly pink. But it's pink. <laughs> it's pink. I mean, if pink rocks up to your house, um, knocks on the door and says, get out, then you leave. No problem, pink. <laughs> it's pink. <laughs> There's a spare key over there. <laughs> we want to know if you've been in a scenario like this poor person that had to deny pink at the door mm. because mm. she didn't have her ID. Where you've had to say no or deny an important or powerful person, mm. right? So, so it might not be a celebrity, but no, it could, it could be, be someone that's really yeah, rich or someone yeah. high up in a business, yeah. and they've asked you to do something, and you're mm, like, the no, premier, the I can't, can't, can't do it. Yeah, sorry, can't do it. Don't care who you are. Sorry, yeah. Twiggy, can't yeah. do it. <laughs> Twiggy, oh, you don't say no, <laughs> you to Twiggy. Yeah, you don't. Know. He, <laughs> he owns everything. Just buys you, uh, Steph. Hello. Hi. How are you going? Hi, Steph. Did you have to say no to someone? I did, um, and it was Shane Warne, unfortunately. What happened? Um, So I was working in one of the um, quarantine hotels when COVID was at its height. Yeah. Yeah. And he caught wind that there was a potential for him to be able to stay in one of our private suites. His PR company contacted the hotel, and I gave them my phone number thinking it was all a bit of a, yeah, whatever, he's not going to want to stay with us. Yeah. Um, And Shane Warne called me directly on my personal phone, and I still thought it was a joke until it it wasn't. (laughs) Yeah. Um, But unfortunately, due to all the restrictions, we we actually said we couldn't actually allow him to stay with us, and it was just allocation as per the government, and he ended up in another hotel. But, um, yeah, it was a very good thing to say no to. 
But oh. we did send him a package from our hotel, like a bit of a care package. and To the other um, hotel? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we sent it to the other hotel. <laughs> the hotel that rejected him <laughs> sent a package to the hotel that welcomed him. <laughs> I don't yeah. think that package ever got to me. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's so funny. Oh, wow. I personally but then again, it's interesting, though, because a lot of people thought there were yeah. a lot of celebrities at that time that were bending the rules, yes, but you right. couldn't do anything to bend the rules no. even for Shane Warne, Steph. So initially we, we did have a family that paid an extensive amount of money to stay, but um, the government sort of, yeah, caught wind of it Clamped and were like, no, nah, it, it's not happening anymore. So and unfortunately Shane was after that rule came in and, yeah, we had to say no to him. Amazing. Oh, wow. Oh, the shake a tweak. Yeah, indeed. Um, thanks, Steph. Michelle, hello. Hello. Hi, Hi Michelle. Mish. Michelle, who did you have to say no to? Daryl Summers. <laughs> what about you know what, I don't even know the story. I'm going to say you were right. <laughs> <laughs> Talk us through it. What happened? It was in the 80s. I was working for security. It was the year that the Gold Logies were held at the State Theatre in Sydney. Um, I was checking the door and he didn't have his ticket and we couldn't let him in. And long story short, there was a big kerfuffle. Um, Don, Don Blackman created yep. this huge hullabaloo at the door. You have to let him in. Don't you know he's going to win the gold logo this year? And, oh. Oh, yeah. It was exactly on the show many, many times for many, many years after that, the, the film clip of, of me saying, no, I'm sorry, we can't allow you access. He was with his wife. His wife had her ticket, but he didn't have... That's yeah. so funny. But, but did you but know? He was, and he was nominated for the Gold Logie. You'd think that'd be enough. Well, not he just won that. the Gold Logie yeah. that year. He won it. Yeah. Did you know? Like, did you recognise him, Michelle? Of course. Yeah. Yeah. But, the, but the, the thing that was frustrating for Daryl is inside he could clearly see Ozzy Ostrich yes, was sitting, sitting there having there. a drink. <laughs> He's getting stuck there. in. Are you serious? But this is the thing. Daryl Summers, right? So big in Australia, and, but uh, the world doesn't know you. And then you compare it to Pink. Mm. She walks off and goes, oh, yeah. no worries. Daryl Summers and um, yeah. John Blackman cause a scene. Remember? No, that that. Come I mean, on. that, it's, that it's was the night that was yeah, and he's, yeah. he's the guy for the let yeah. him in. I know come that on. is a bit ridiculous. Give me but strength. remember when at the Australian Open they made um, uh, Roger Federer produce his ID and he's, and he didn't have it on him, and they're like the security guys going, "No, no, you need your ID," and they're like, "It's Roger Federer." Like, come on. I know. Oh my god. Wow, you really, you, it really gets you in someone's mind to Daryl Summers, isn't it? Really it really does. Oh, I've yeah, never a couple times we've turned up here for yeah. events and we've had security that they go, oh, no, mm. and then... And, that, and I just leave. Yeah, <laughs> they don't let me in. and I just leave. I go, oh, what, and go, go home, no worries. Let's go to <laughs> Yeah, Emily that's my face on the board. No, in it's Mirror fine. Booker. Hi, <laughs> Emily. <out> <laughs> Hello. All right, Hi, Emily. Emily. Who did you have to say no to? Um, Sean McManus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good morning, Megan. Um, okay, um, we're going to need to know every single bit of this information and you take as long as time as you, you need. Know what? All right, Em, go. So this, yeah. This, yeah. It's not my, my... This is my cousin's story, but yeah. I'm going to tell it. Okay. okay. So he used, to, he used to manage the Mirabuka... Um, sorry, the Rottnest Visitor Centre. Yep. And one day, Sean McManus arrived with his family mm, um, and obviously you have to show ID to check in at the visitor centre. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, Sean McManus couldn't produce his ID <laughs> and got quite um, <laughs> annoyed that he was being asked to show his ID. But can I just and say quickly, said, when Sean was quite annoyed and having a go, Sean usually prefaces yeah. with saying, don't take this personally, personally. Yeah. and then and has a go. Uh, yeah. Mm. yeah. But I, I do think the word, don't you know who I am? <laughs> oh, what a load of shit, Emily. Oh, that is the no, biggest no, load no, of I shit. Think, I think what you actually said was, come on, you know who I am. Oh, sure I did. And he did. He did know who you were, but... For the rules, he made the Don't you know I am? That's I, a story that, I, I, that, that that goes with every person. I'm also believe that Sean that? asked who he is. Yes, yeah, do, he's you, got do you, do you know, who, know I who I am? Because I, like, I actually don't remember, and I don't have any ID. <laughs> so please help well, me. Well, that's a good defence. And who is this woman and these children with me? Because he's got a terrible memory. <laughs> Sean, <laughs> Sean Diva McManus. Yeah, that that is, sounds right. That is not sounds true. Like not, well, I can say just about 100 percent of the time I don't even go in there because Megan always gets there before me and goes. To the visitor well, centre. Yeah, now she does yeah. after that incident. Don't you know who I am? No, she said, come on, you know who I am. Yes. Which I, I totally believe that you would have said that. Oh, that sounds like something you yeah, would say. Oh, I, don't <laughs> know. I don't know if Sean would say that. Oh, shit. No, so they're going, 
we need ID. Yeah. And he's going, I don't have it. And yeah. then going, sorry, we can't do it. Yeah. And he says, oh, come on, you know who I am. No, oh, I, she I, might I don't say know. That. I, to be honest, I don't, oh, I don't oh, know. I, if might, Sean I might would say, say that. I don't have any ID. I, I will tell you right now because that would never come out of my mouth. No, so I don't think God, that Sean would yeah, do that. Yeah, maybe, maybe, people are classy. You, 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 hear, you hear about yeah. people meeting up. I don't know whoever. You're very it might defensive be. Oh, at the moment with your posture. You do have your arms crossed. You do have your arms crossed. I do believe Sean asked who he was. Yes, that's what I believe the story. Ellie, you work closely with him. Do you think that he would have done that? Hundred percent. Sean. You're all over me. No. You're all over me this month. Uh, I've had Sean, enough. Sean, Sean. <laughs> Don't you know who he is? <laughs> Sean, we've got to pick what a winner. What do you give Emily the prize, I Sean? Think, I think Emily should get it. Emily's think... definitely not getting it. <laughs> no, I'm going to give it to a Emily. Hot voucher. Upgrade your movie give experience. With her. By the way, Emmy, uh, don't take it personally because that wasn't your story. So I do take that on board. Upgrade your movie experience with Hoyt's bigger screens, best sound and comfy seats at Emily, 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 so, uh, the audio from what Taylor and Travis said during the Super Bowl after the victory when they were kissing has been released. And I don't know. And I know that they knew it was going to come. And yeah. so that was released by the NFL. Yes, so the they NFL released it. They, 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 release it. they must have asked permission, surely. Well, I mean, I, they don't need to. Mm. Um, they haven't released what he said to his coach. No. When he weird. had that blow up, and so, but I don't know. It just seems like um, I felt like I was listening into something I shouldn't listen to. So let's all do it together. Thank you for oh, coming, baby. I can't believe that. Thank you. I can't believe you. I can't Thank you for the support. You. How do you Thank you for that? coming. <laughs> Thank you for making it across our way across the world. You're the best, baby. Oh my god. The absolute best. Was it electric? <laughs> It was unbelievable. It seems like a private moment. Yes. It is. Oh, Let's play it again. <laughs> <laughs> I do it feel like I'm like moment. peering in. Thank you. I can't believe you. Thank you for the support. How do you Thank you for that? coming. Oh. <laughs> Thank you for making it across our way across the world. You're the best, baby. Oh, my God. The absolute best. Was it electric? It was unbelievable. I don't think it's right people are listening to this. No. Play it again. Thank you for coming, baby. I can't believe that. Thank you. I can't believe you. Thank you for the support. How do you Thank you for that? coming. It's not right, Sean. Thank you for making it across our way. That seems a bit strange to me. Like, thank you for coming. Like, yes, know. it seems very oh. formal, but he's, yes. just, he's just caught up. Yeah. He's sweating yeah. and Taylor's there. He's just won there. the Super Bowl. Sean, so yeah. this is another thing that I'd like to talk to you about. Mm-hmm. All right, so let's talk about the red flag situation. People are seeing the way oh, that Taylor blew up at the coach and they're saying it's a red flag. And Travis, there are articles like that. Yeah. Sorry, um, Travis. Travis, yeah. There are articles everywhere yeah, about that. Yeah, I saw that. But yet, on the sporting and when you're in sport, you, you, your aggression's up, everything's up. It doesn't mean just because you blow up at your coach like that and sort of, you know, shove him a little bit. It doesn't mean that translates to what you're doing at home. No, well, you'd hope not. Absolutely. No, absolutely not. It's most, the most aggressive people the most gentle on the off. field. I was thinking about um, this the other day. So I played with... Um, Oh, some, one of the most aggressive guys on the field was Josh Carr. Now, he was a little yes. good old guy, and people remember Josh. And he got suspended at the drop of a hat every time because he once he took the field, he is so polite oh, yeah. and quiet. He wears glasses. He's just not that person. Wears John Walsfold. John <laughs> yeah. Walsfold. Remember him? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, Enforcer on the field yeah. and very mild. I mean, but so, yeah. say Danny yeah. Green. Danny Green, who yeah. boxes yeah. people, like hits him in the head for a living. You take him out of that scenario where he's not fighting and he is the most gentle, level-headed, mm. calm person you'll ever meet. You feel protected around Danny. Most definitely. And not because he's got a belt in one, just because he's got that presence. But, Nathan, after that was shown a few times with um, Travis Kelsey going off to Andy Reid, you could you could you could have written the articles the next day. Oh, 100%. Oh, and they've God. got to write that, something. Like, do you know what I mean? They've yeah. got columns to fill. But yes, it's yeah, it's interesting. It's the Nathan, Matt, and Sean podcast. Customers at Spud Shed in Allenbrook <laughs> were shocked when they realised there was a woman at the checkout line with two rats sitting on her, her shoulders. shoulders. Now, one of them was a black rat. The other, a hairless rat. Now, Sean. Mm. Ill, yes. Especially rat. the hairless. Mm. Imagine a hairless rat. It'll be like a ball bag running all over your body. Yeah, yeah. I'm not into those cats that are like that as well. No, no, no. no, no. It's just too much skin. Ugh. Yeah. It it's is like, ball bags on your shoulder. It's ball bags. It's running around. Just Thursday. a ball bag. It's running around <laughs> all over you, Sean, on your face, everywhere. So um, you like it? No. Oh, which is a problem. Why single, single now? <laughs> 
So uh, it was 5 p.m. in the checkout line. Oh, you don't do that sort of thing yep. at 5 p.m. <laughs> no, this no, person, this customer said it was busy, and I noticed Were a they... lady in front of me um, with what appeared to be two rats around her shoulders. But was she buying cheese? <laughs> Why would she bother to bring her rats to the shops, she said? It's just not something you expect to see every day. Because well, obviously right. they wanted to go shopping. Yeah. <laughs> the customer who was shocked at the thought of the rodents roaming around the uncovered fresh fruit and vegetables <laughs> said the staff only spotted the woman on a way out of the store, but they were amused by it. Customers were shaking their heads, though. Oh, I bet. They were like, oh, no, there better not be rat crap over the food. Mm. Well, I mean, yes. they, they weren't running on the food. No, they, they were, were running on, on his shoulder. shoulder. Well, but no, yeah, well, no one yeah. knows what the rats were doing while they were there. You know what I mean? Like, mm. uh, Sneaking off. Yeah, yeah. Doing yeah. their own thing. Yeah, yeah I get it, yeah. mate. Is a clean rat okay? Like, I know dirty rats are like, yeah, so is, that, is, is, is a pet rat... Pet rats are very different to your street rat. Yes, I, but I, do they still carry things that we wouldn't want on our... Well, the last doco I saw, which is Ratatouille, <laughs> I think... Yeah. They well, he was clean. in a kitchen. He was so, in a kitchen, so he's clearly yeah. passed all the tests. Well, I'm yeah. coming from... Um, all, anything that I get my knowledge from is from Danger Mouse, um, <gasps> and they just solve crimes. So, yeah. I don't know. Do you need to take a rat out? For a walk. I don't think you need to take, <laughs> a rat take the rat out for a day's activity. I know, uh, so pet, uh, cats are even weird to me. I Dogs saw a lady at the left bank yeah. standing on the corner, on the corner yeah. next yeah. to the left bank yeah. with her cat. Yeah. just two days ago. On a pe- leash? I, it wasn't. It was collared and just sitting next to her. But it's like she didn't have it on lead. Th- what are you doing? <laughs> Sorry, houses around. So are you, are you at the stage where you, you're seeing people with cats like that, Nathan? You're like, because we've seen no, it so often. I, it is still strange to me. Yeah. There was a guy that I saw here in Subiaco one day and he had a coffee and he had a cat on his shoulder and he was just walking, he was getting his morning <laughs> coffee. And that to me was a little bit strange. But like, yeah, cats and dogs, I mean, they're out and about. Well, I was in Albany yeah. over the break yeah. and we were having lunch at Emu Point Cafe. Yeah. It's right on the beach. So yeah. there's like a little grass area outside and then it's the beach. And a kid walked past in her bathers. So she, they were there for a day at the beach, yeah. carrying a guinea pig. And I'm like, look, that kid's got a, a guinea pig at the, at the beach. Guinea. Do you take a guinea pig to the beach? Are they famous no. swimmers? No, they, they, no, live they on the do bal- not they live like happy bars. Yes, guinea pigs. No. Uh, David McClung, our boss, who is um, producing at the moment, <laughs> is he? <laughs> well, that's what he's, he's calling standing us. There. He's in the corner. Uh, Dave, you're at Bunnings. Yeah, I was at Bunnings the other week, and uh, there was a man uh, with a chicken on a leash. <laughs> At Bunnings, took it to Bunnings. Yeah, took it to Bunnings. Yeah. So you're just like taking yeah. the chicken for a walk. There used to be a guy around um, Nova here, around um, Subiaco, he would um, have a ferret on a leash. Fer- oh, I've seen enough ferrets on a yeah. leash that you- now that's normal to yeah. me. But a chicken on a leash. A chicken yeah. on a Where leash. Where do you even buy a, a chicken, chicken leash? leash. It was it was friendly as well. People were going up and saying hello and patting it, and <laughs> that's a really good point. Who's selling chicken leashes these days? Chicken. How many are they selling? Chicken <laughs> leash. And we missed a spot in the market. Chicken leash and harness. Oh. $3.39 from Timu. Of course. That place has got everything. So it's it's pet have circle. Everything. You've got a pet circle <laughs> and there's $17.99. Because I've got one of those chest guards. Oh, yeah, yeah, one of those chest chickens. Yeah, they've got a chest guard so hungry people don't rip their breasts out. It's kind of, <laughs> kind of a little harness like you'd put a little dog in. Uh, that's that amazing. That All right. We want to talk about this, right? So not we're, we're taking cats and dogs out of the mix. Yeah, yeah, no. yeah. We want to talk about other animals that are pets being taken out of the house on to somewhere where you wouldn't normally expect them yeah. to be. Like a guinea pig at the beach or a chicken at Bunnings. So strange. <laughs> Ali, um, uh, would you take your Mexican walking fish <laughs> horse riding? Of course I would. Why wouldn't you? <laughs> Horse riding. <laughs> Imagine on your side. Famously. Wee! <laughs> I can't take it out for margaritas, obviously. <laughs> Just like more yeah. sense, Nathan. Come on. Now. Well, I'm the chili con queso, please. <laughs> <laughs> so we are talking about taking an animal somewhere where animals don't normally go, like um, the lady that took her two rats to Spud Shed. Yeah, and I know, yeah, my God. Yeah, and it's not just taking animals, it's taking animals that, like, yeah. shouldn't be out. Yeah, like, really, on an adventure. Megan, hello? Hi. Hi. Hi, Megan. Hey, Megan. What have you seen? Um, I was down at Nedlands on the river uh, along the foreshore, mm, yep. and I saw this couple pushing their pram, and I thought, mm. oh, yeah, they've got a beautiful baby, oh, you beautiful. know, how cute. Love it. Um, and then the baby sat up in the pram, and it was a macaw. <laughs> it was like... <laughs> yeah, the big parrot. <laughs> your parrot in a pram. <laughs> in a pram. <laughs> and I... Just lost it. I thought it was oh, so hilarious. That's so oh, cool. Yeah. They, 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 they live it? forever, those McCalls. Yeah, they, they do. Live, yeah, yeah. Friend Sean's got one. He loves yeah. it. 
Because I can't okay. believe... Okay, is so there a pram? Is there a, a pram? bird? So there's a, bird a chicken pram. leash. Is, is there, there a, a bird pram? Like a parrot leash. Like, can you leash because your parrot? And they because they can fly. Could you let like, yeah. like so? It's like you've got a kite. So, but if it's in the pram, <gasps> do you have to strap it in to stop there it from just flying off? There is a parrot harness <laughs> and leash. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, is I, it a, I, just a longer lead than there the chicken is a one? Bear. It's got a thing there for your wings so it can fly. So you can literally, like, just have walk it. Walk along oh, that's and it's just not flying fair. Oh, my God. It's like... It's like, it's like thinks it's getting away. Sean. You're like... Whack a GoPro and that's nature's drone. <laughs> actually, that's How a good, good point. That? That's a lot cheaper. I mean, maybe your dad needs it for the pigeons. Yeah. Oh, my actually, God. Actually, oh. get put, oh, put thanks, this to use. Megan, that's Megan so funny. that was extraordinary. Thank you. Lee's in Belia. Hello. Good morning, everyone. How are you? Oh, good, good Lee. Okay, have you seen an animal out and about that you thought, that shouldn't be out and about? Yeah, so I was out, this was a few years ago, and I was out walking my dog, and, like, he's a, he, at the time, he was a really big boy as well, mm. and he started really pulling on the lead, and that wasn't like him, and I was finding it quite hard to keep him under control on mm. the lead, yeah. and then around the corner came somebody walking a black and white and pink full-size <laughs> Full size pig. What, what area was this, Lee? Where were you? Um, I was at Will Park. Um, it, it was around, I think, Quinana, sort yes. of down that way. There's a gorgeous little park in there. Yeah. And um, yeah, and I was just sitting there, and it, like they're just walking along. His, you know, the pigs sort of like, like it's normal. Along the little path and. Yeah, like it was perfectly normal. Guys, well, you know what? It is perfectly normal because let me show you the pig, pig leash. leash and harness. <laughs> <laughs> Are you putting all these on the same site? No, or, no, 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 they're, no, different. no they're, they're all oh. different ones. Like here we go. This is this is um a uh, moon dilly a uh, moon diddly pets pig harness. This is a pet store. How much? Mm. Um, the pet, oh, okay, they are, they're a little bit more expensive. Okay, there's a you really good one here. They, they can range from around $30 to $200, because depending like, on the size, size of yes. the pig. Yeah. God, and that was a big, it was a big size pig, Lee. It was a full-grown pig. Full-grown yeah. pig. pig, yeah, fully sized. And That's... the dog's like, I can smell bacon, and I'm not <laughs> sure why. I know, it's delicious. <laughs> Thanks, Lee. Deb's in Forestfield. Hello. Hi, guys. How are you? Hi, Deb. Hi, Deb. Good, thanks. Uh, did you see an animal out and about? I have seen this animal out and about quite a few times now, probably four four times. Yeah. Okay. I shop at the local forest field forum mm -hmm. and no lie, these farmer type people take their <laughs> farmer sheep type. Their sheep. sheep in a shopping oh. trolley. Oh, oh. Whoa. Whoa. Do, that. do you mean into like the supermarket? <laughs> they take in, they take it into the centre. They don't go into Coles. The guy waits outside while the wife does does the shopping. <laughs> and me being a huge animal lover, I yes. have to go up pat the sheep. Yes. And um, I said to the, the the guy, "Why do you bring your sheep to the yeah, shop?" Yeah. And he said, "Because she gets bored at home. She gets wow. bored at Imagine home." Imagine being at a, like a Westfield or whatever, right? Or yeah. whatever your shopping centre yeah. is. Imagine being there and there's a, a sheep in a trolley. You think that person's just come from a dares? Yes. <laughs> in winter, yeah. <laughs> Guys, but yes, is there, there before before we yes, 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 everybody. There is a sheep leash and harness okay. as well has that to be. you can get there between um, forty dollars. Thanks, everyone. And they can go up to 323. Three, three, but that one there, seconds, is a goat harness. Oh, okay, yeah. Multi oh, that's format. for, a for, a, for a, uh, driving, is that? And if here is sled. your alpaca harness. Sean? Sean? Oh, mum and dad would like need that. Thirty-four yeah. ninety-five. Mm. Mate, mm. the alpacas, when they look at you, they, they're coming for you at my mum and dad's house. It's just dangerous, man. <laughs> well, maybe stop upsetting them. Well, oh, man, we go yeah. harness them, don't you? Yeah, you do. All I'm right. not sure if you take um, sheep to this. To the shopping centre? Yeah, not but really. That's what farmer type people do, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Nathan, Nat, and Sean is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcasts.com.au. Nova.